this is a big one for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. A huge game. When is a game huge for a 3-8-1 and one team? This is it. Because they're 3-8-1 and one because they're once upon a time second overall chosen quarterback who has been chosen to lead this team deep into this decade based on the very rich contract they bestowed upon him early. And we all praised Howie Roseman for doing it early. They bestowed that contract on Carson Wentz, and he has just absolutely degraded into now a benched quarterback. For Jalen Hurts, and I can't wait to see this young man have at it. Meanwhile, as we're getting ready to turn the page to Hurts, there's still the review as to what has happened to Carson Wentz that he's benched against the New Orleans Saints in a must-have game. 3-8-1 and one for a franchise that, whose coach is now on the hot seat, whose general manager is now reported to be on the hot seat whose owner is red hot about what's going on right now. Jason Kelsey, the center of the Philadelphia Eagles, whose brother, by the way, Travis, congratulations to him, named the Walter Payton Man of the Year finalist for the Kansas City Chiefs today. Look at that, balling out on the field to the tune of five straight thousand-yard seasons, first ever for a tight end, and he's now also in the community balling out. He is the... Walter Payton Man of the Year honoree for Philadelphia. I mean, for Kansas City. At any rate, his brother Jason Kelsey, who is a leader of this team, um, was asked about what's going on with Carson Wentz and what happened with Carson Wentz, and he reminded everyone it's a team effort. You know, Carson has unfortunately not played well, so you know these are the situations that happen. But you feel bad that you know he's the sole one taking the hit right now. You know, obviously, the entire offense has been terrible. You know, offensive line, running backs, receivers, coaches. You know, you aren't this bad unless everybody shares blame in this whole thing. And I think everybody here knows that. I know that Carson knows that, that this is not just him. Um, and, uh, you know, we just we, we got to do something. We got to try and uh, spark uh, some sort of difference. You can't keep doing the same thing and expecting to, uh, to get better. And we just haven't been able to do it. So, you know, obviously, you know, Jalen's going to go out there and get his opportunity this week. And, you know, he's a young kid that, you know, you know, great attitude, uh, went in at the end of the game and uh, did some things. So we'll see how he does in a, in a full game. Tough spot for Jason Kelsey because he's the guy, you know, when you talk about a center and a quarterback, those guys are as close as they, you possibly can get Yeah, physically, emotionally. <laughs> I mean, literally, they're as close spatially as you can get. So for him to sit there and have to answer about Carson Wentz and – also, he's got to now snap to the next guy. I thought he handled that expertly, certainly with the flowing locks and the Man. mullet and the beard I mean, and the whole thing working right now. Now, is he getting ready to star in a Bob Seeker biopic? All of it. Or I mean, Roadhouse 2? <laughs> One or the other. I don't know, but I usually use uh, biopic, by the way. I don't Bio go biopic. Biopic, you know. Bi biopic, biopic sounds like I need glasses. Look at that. And I don't need glasses to see this. Uh, here suits splendor. Of an individual, I'm growing it. I'm growing it out like that. Even, um, the, even the eyebrows. He's got working. It's tremendous. I mean, well, again, let's just. I thought he handled that very dicey situation expertly. Um, and then there's the issue about looking over the steering wheel, right? Because if this does work for Jalen Hurts, or even if it doesn't, if it just comes close, like if it's just like we saw some flashes, or we see some flashes. Similar to what we saw when he came in for Wentz last week when he started sparking the offense. And he was tough to put down. And he was tough to keep in the pocket. And he was doing things that Wentz wasn't doing. And they almost came back and tied that game against Green Bay. And then Aaron Jones put it out of reach. But... Does this mean he's going to be the starter for the rest of the season? Do you do you name that? Do you do that? What do you do? And the coach, who's no doubt just taking it one game at a time, answered that question with a different cliche. Listen for the phrase that pays. What is your plan here going forward? Uh, do you see this as 
something just for this week uh, or, or what? Les, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict the future, right? I mean, come on. I mean, that's, you know, um, all I can all I can focus on is today and, and getting our team prepared today and, and getting our guys ready for, for Sunday. I would love to come up wow. and, and ask a head coach to, to do this for me. You know, Steve Kornacki's back on the set of Football Night in America this week and did promise that he would try and sneak in sniffing it in uh, front of a nationally – televised audience um i would i would love for a head coach to just say i don't have a delorean <laughs> I, I can't set the date for the future crystal ball it's kind of ancient like you know the new millennium just, you just know what i mean like a new millennium a new millennium is going to be upgraded like, a little what's right? that about how about I don't have a hot tub? Oh, you just took the words out of my mouth. There we go. Oh, there we stole go. it from me. I don't have a hot tub. <laughs> Listen, I, I, don't, I don't have a phone booth in London. That's what I'm saying. I don't have a phone booth. I don't have a hot tub. Like, what are we doing? Come on now. I don't have a crystal ball. That's the way out of it. Number two on your list, Rich, which I wrote down. Mm-hmm. The I don't have a crystal Favorite ball. coaches cliches. Yeah, 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 it is what it is. It is what it is. You can control only what you can control, mm-hmm. and I don't have a crystal ball. And the second one, I you can only control what you can control is substituted in times of OTAs and training camps when there are holdouts. For I'm only talking about the guys that are here. <laughs> Those are your coaching cliches in the NFL. One game at a time is kind of like yeah. the 70s and 80s. That's so last century. That's the crystal ball of phrases. I don't have, I don't, guys, I don't have a crystal ball. Should, or should a head coach bring a crystal ball to <laughs> the Zoom like, puts it over and his, just say, hold on a second, because that was Les Bowen, I imagine, was asked the question in Philadelphia. It, Les, hold on a second. Let me see. No, nah, it's just, uh, is this thing plugged in? I mean, Parcells in the old days in Dallas when he used to go on the table, Rich. Yeah. Perfect for Parcells. Oh, yeah. Crystal he used ball to sit, right there. sit there and have perfect. his, like, his sessions table. like he was the boss with, and the media was Dr. Melfi, and he would just share. He would just keep sharing. He would have been perfect for Like that. a session. Maybe they should just bring a magic eight ball with them up to yeah and shake it. Just take shake a football it. magic eight ball. Ask again later. In all seriousness, he does have to see what Jalen Hurts looks like. I mean, because it you what know if, if, what if he's terrible. Just, go ahead, go ahead and what what were they really thinking? Hit oh, that for uh, me too, because I know you. I'm just I'm just audibleizing here. I'm what Muhammad. were they really thinking? Because this is what D- Doug would have to say. Les, are you kidding me? You know, I, I I stuck with the quarterback forever and a day. Do you see how much he costs? Do you see how much it would be dead money? Do you see how much it would cost us to have him as a backup? It would totally hamstring us. You know that the salary cap for the first time in the history of the NFL looks like it's going to be actually shrinking next year. I don't need a crystal ball to know that. I know it's shrinking. Are you kidding me? So it's now 3-8-1. and one. We finally waited to this point in time, and now I finally do this, and you're asking me about what happens next? I just need to see him score a touchdown, Les, don't you? I mean, you've seen him in the media portion of, of practice. We've seen some flashes. I have no idea, but I'm not going to sit here and say Carson Wentz is the backup quarterback for the rest of the season. Then I got to talk to my general manager, owner. Really? You want me to tell you now? And seen. <laughs> it's probably what he wanted to say to him. No, no, he's just got to go reach in the old bag of cliches and go, oh, bless. I don't have a crystal ball. Come on now. Is there a coach anywhere at any level? Call us at 844 204 Even if you're a high school coach, Pop Warner, do you have a crystal ball? <laughs> I want to know a coach who owns a crystal ball. I have a crystal ball. As a matter of fact, I see the future. I see wins 16-0, and 0, man. <laughs> oh, that's a guy with a crystal ball. Hey, man. Jonathan Gruden. 16-0, and 0, man. As Darren Waller referred to him earlier this week. Jonathan. Jonathan Gruden. Should we just spitballing here, Rich? Should we come up with an Eisen show crystal, crystal ball, ball and, send, and send it to all the no, coaches? No. What we need to do first is have a segment. We have a crystal ball. Okay. Predict the future. Brand it. Put it on richeisenstore.com. Ah, and we sell do it. not sell at it. all claim that it works, but it's a Rich Eisen show crystal ball. Then send it out. Love hey. it. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.